What's up you guys? It's your homeboy Josh. For today we're going to be talking about machine learning software or websites for this case. Now, basically PyTorch and TensorFlow are under the same category. All right. So, let's first talk about PyTorch. So, what's with PyTorch that makes them, you know, good? First, they have dynamic computer computational graphs. So they utilize a dynamic computational graph which allows more flexibility in model construction and easier debugging. They also have something that's called Pythonic interface. So basically, um, if you're a programmer or you know some code, then the word Python um, means something to you, right? Because Python is a programming language. Now, uh, with this said, they provide a more Pythonic interface, making it easier to learn and use, especially for researchers and those coming from a Python background. Basically, as what my um, tech friend has told me, uh, Python is usually used or commonly used in machine learning. So next, they have a community and ecosystem. So they have a vibrant community and a rapidly expanding com uh, ecosystem with many libraries and tools built around it. They also have strong adoption in research, so they also have gained significant adoption in research community due to its ease of use and flexibility. Also, having narrative su support for GPU acceleration, um, for me, even though I'm not really that techy, but um, somehow, even in video editing, uh, GPU acceleration really matters because actually the GPU packs um, packs some power and some of, uh, actually most of that isn't used uh, much by your computer, especially if you're just gaming. I mean, if you're not gaming rather, sorry. So if you're not gaming, you're just doing simple works on your PC. Actually, you're not um, utilizing much of your GPU and that's where uh, the extra power is hidden. So basically, so you're going to use PyTorch and you have a GPU that's powerful, maybe let's say a GTX 1650 or 1660 or even an RTX um, 2090 or a 3090. That extra power would be very good in working with PyTorch. Lastly, they boast of a dynamic neural network. So basically, their dynamic nature makes it well suited for dynamic neural networks such as those with varying input sizes or architecture. So guys, that's all for PyTorch. We're going to move on now with TensorFlow. So um, as, as of my research, TensorFlow is really, really good in machine learning. So let's see what they have under the hood. First, they have static computational graphs. So they um, tradi traditionally used... Uh, they used st static computational graphs, which were more efficient for deployment and production purposes. However, TensorFlow 2.0 introduced eager execution, providing a more dynamic experience similar to PyTorch. Now, they have high-level abstractions. So TensorFlow offers high-level abstractions like Keras, which simplify the process of building and training neural networks, especially for beginners. That's very good because, you know, opening doors to beginners with these processes is really good because it gives them um, the opportunity to learn and advance themselves in this field. Now, they have something that's called TensorFlow Extended TFX. So they provide a comprehensive ecosystem for end-to-end -end machine learning, including tools for data processing, model training, serving, and monitoring through TensorFlow Extended. Next, um, they have strong industry adoption, so they have they were seen they were seen strong uh they have seen strong rather adoption in industry, particularly among large companies due to its scalability, production readiness, and support for deployment on various platforms. Now, they also introduced TensorFlow Lite and tensorflow.js um if I'm right, JS means JavaScript. So TensorFlow offers frameworks like, again, TensorFlow Lite for deploying models on mobile and embedded devices, as well as TensorFlow.js for running models in the browser. Lastly, they have something that's called TensorFlow Serving. So what is TensorFlow Serving? 
Basically, it is a dedicated serving system for deploying machine learning models in production environments with high performance. So basically, we're done talking about the services that they offer and what do they pack under the hood. So now, if you're going to choose between these two, first of the things that you're going to look at is the use case. So how do you plan to use um, the services? Next is ease of use, which one is easier for you? The next is community and support. Um, what kind of community do you want? Because I think both of them have similar community since they're under a single category. But for sure, for sure, they still have um, a different uh, community makeup for that case. Next is integration. What integrations do you need? Because um, given that they are both under the single category, they still have different integrations under the hood. Lastly is performance. So while both frameworks offer excellent performance, your specific requirements and hardware may influence your choice. So as you have noticed, all of the factors in deciding which one to choose leans more on the user because that's how you actually make a very good decision in choosing between two things, not just these ones, but on almost everything. You really want to check what are your needs, what are your preferences, what what services do you do you need and what tools do you need what integrations and all that stuff because after you do that and you do the decision for sure you're not going to regret the decision that you made so that's all for today's video guys thank you so much for watching please do not forget to like and share this video also kindly hit the subscribe and notification bell for a lot of more videos like this this is your homeboy josh and i'm gonna see you on the next one